Hi there, I'm Mrs F and this is my video on Nazi racial policies and the treatment of minorities. We're currently looking at topic 4 of the Edexcel specification, Life in Nazi Germany. Last time we finished looking at employment and living standards and in the next two lessons we're going to be looking at the persecution of minorities. Hitler set out his racial beliefs in his book Mein Kampf in 1925. Hitler believed that a person's characteristics, their attitudes, abilities and behaviour were all determined by their racial makeup. In Hitler's view, races carried within them traits that were passed from one generation to the next and no individual could overcome the qualities of race. For Hitler, all of human history could be explained in terms of racial struggle and he believed that there was a hierarchy of races. For Hitler, the Aryan race was the superior race, the Herrenvolk or master race. They were portrayed as tall, blonde, blue-eyed and athletic. Other races, such as the Slavs of Eastern Europe, were deemed to be untermenschen, which means subhuman. And for Hitler, the worst of the intermention were Romani Gypsies and Jews. Later, Hitler deemed them Lebenswert, which means unworthy of life. Just saying it makes me shiver, it's just absolutely vile. In the illustration you see on the screen, it's supposed to be comparing German youth with Jewish youth and it's subtitled From the Face Speaks the Soul of the Race that somehow you could tell a person's characteristics by looking at their race and facial features. A lot of Hitler's racial ideas were based on pseudoscience. The first of these pseudosciences is social Darwinism where scientists took the ideas of Charles Darwin, who explained that species changed over time through evolution, and then they then applied those ideas to races. So it was argued that each race desired to expand, and since there was only a finite amount of space on the planet, survival of the fittest meant that naturally there would be constant racial struggle um, with violent conquest and military confrontation. And the Nazis believed that the superior races had not just the right but the obligation to subdue and even exterminate inferior ones, seeing this as survival of the fittest. The next kind of pseudoscience where Hitler got his ideas from um, is that of eugenics, which was actually quite popular in a number of countries, even in um, the USA and Britain. This was the idea that by selecting the so-called best parents or preventing reproduction by unsuitable parents, you could improve your racial stock like you might um, improve um, plants or, um, or animals by selective breeding. And then you have racial hygiene, which is taking um, eugenics a step um, further. Um, this was um, the belief that the Aryan race um, was threatened by intermarriage with other races. Um, which it was believed would dilute um, the perceived superior characteristics that there were in German blood. So now we'll have a look at how the Nazis treated different minority groups within Germany. And we'll start with the Slavs. The Slavs were ancient tribes of people who had originally migrated into Europe from the east. Um, their modern descendants are found in large areas across Eastern Europe and by the 1930s there were quite a lot of people of Slavic origin who lived in Germany. 
So the first way that they were persecuted was through propaganda and school lessons, which constantly told Germans that the Slavs were subhuman. The Nazis insisted that the Slavs were of a different origin from Aryan Germans and needed to be treated differently. The Nazis also threatened to invade Slavic countries in Eastern Europe for Lebensraum or extra living space for Germany's people. They felt that a lot of territory had been taken due to the Treaty of Versailles and that conquesting sorry, the conquest of land in the east would give them more space to expand the Aryan population and would help them with furthering their destiny as the master race. Gypsies was the name used by the Nazis for the Roma people. There were about 26,000 gypsies in Germany in the early 1930s. The Nazis believed that gypsies did not work enough or contribute enough taxes because of their nomadic lifestyle travelling from place to place. And they believed that gypsies posed a threat to the racial purity of Germany. So, from 1936, some gypsies were forced to live in special camps. For example, one camp in Berlin which had 6,000, sorry, 600 gypsies living there, had just two latrines, so not even proper toilets, three water taps and no electricity. Many Roma were um, subjected to forced sterilizations to prevent them from having children. And in 1938, they stepped up the persecution. On the 16th of May, Himmler established the Reich Central Office for combating the gypsy nuisance. You can see from the language how they felt about the Roma people. And um, in that same year, Himmler issued the decree for combating the gypsy plague, so even more violent language, which basically created a nationwide database of all the Roma living in the Third Reich. And that database would later be used to round up the Roma and put them into forced labour and concentration camps. So um, the Roma gypsies um, were persecuted um, more harshly than um, the Slavic people, for example. Another group persecuted by the Nazis were homosexuals. They felt that they were lowering moral standards and they saw them as asocial um, because they were um, not producing children because of their preference for the same sex. So a lot of gay men were arrested, tortured and forced to give up the names of their partners so that a register of um, gay men could be created in Germany and the laws were strengthened against homosexuality, which meant that more and more homosexuals were sent to concentration camps where they were ridiculed and subject to hard work. As you can see in the picture, they were forced to wear pink triangles um, to single them out as being homosexual. Um, the most, one of the most severe things was that Nazi laws encouraged the voluntary castration of homosexuals. Lesbians were not seen as a threat by the Nazis in quite the same way as homosexuals were. They didn't really have a kind of definitive policy for persecuting supported by the Gestapo um, and also ended up in concentration camps um, where they tended to be listed as asocial or political prisoners. So it's quite difficult to get precise numbers. The Nazis believed that people with disabilities were a burden on society, which is actually what you see um, in that propaganda poster, which is meant to make you think that it's very expensive to look after a disabled person. They also felt that they were weakening racial purity. So in 1933, they passed the law for the prevention of hereditarily diseased offspring, which made it compulsory for people to be sterilised if they were mentally ill, alcoholic, deformed, epileptic, deaf or blind. 
and it's estimated about 400,000 people were sterilised by 1939. The persecution got even worse in the autumn of 1939 with the T4 programme, which focused on disabled people living in state-run nursing homes or hospitals. Um, basically, um, a survey was given to doctors and nurses about individual patients, which they were told was to collect statistics for the government, but the real purpose was to identify um, victims. Once they were identified, victims were transported on buses to one of six killing centres. Initially, they were killed by lethal injection, but by 1940, this was changed to um, gassing by carbon, carbon monoxide, which was seen as cheaper and more effective. Um, and that's obviously something they then replicated with the Jews later on. Um, victims were cremated and their families were told they died of natural causes. But the programme did become knowledge and caused massive outrage. We've already learnt about um, the Archbishop um, von Galen, um, who protested against the programme in a sermon. And actually, under pressure from the public, Hitler did eventually order a halt to the programme. But it's estimated that in total, um, over 70,000 people were killed at euthanasia um, centres. Um, and over 5,000 children with disabilities were killed. There were also other minority groups who were persecuted by the Nazis. One notable group are the Jehovah's Witnesses. The Nazis didn't like them because they refused to accept their total power, saying that they were first answerable to God. So they would um, refuse to do the Hail Hitler salute, for example. Um, they also didn't like the Jehovah Witnesses because they were anti-war and they had a lot of international connections. So quite a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses um, were sent to concentration camps. Um, there were about 6,000 um, by 1939 and at the end of the war over 1,400 um, had been murdered. Um, they were forced to wear um, purple triangles, as you can see um, in the um, picture. Um, the Nazis also persecuted black people. Um, one of the most extreme actions um, was the mass sterilisation of the Rhineland children in 1937. The Rhineland children were about kind of between 600 to 800 children um, who had been born to German women and black French soldiers who'd occupied the Rhineland after Germany's defeat in the First World War. Um, and they were seen as a kind of threat to the Aryan race due to their mixed heritage. Um, so um, about 385 of these children were secretly sterilised. So now we've had a look at the racial beliefs and the treatment of other minority groups, we're going to have um, a whole lesson focusing on the Jews who were subject to some of the most severest forms of persecution and discrimination. So I'll catch you for that lesson next week. Goodbye.